Hi guys, in this video I will show you how you can clone your own voice but also the voice of others using AI. Please keep in mind, you know, with great power comes also great responsibility. So don't do any harmful things with that. And uh, yeah, for this video I created the following audio sample. Thanks for reading this article. I hope you learned something. And after generating that audio sample I tried to speak it with my own voice, which sounded like this one. Thanks for reading this article. I hope you learned something. Yeah, so as you can hear, there's definitely still a difference between the two samples, even though I feel like the margin is quite small. And what I like the most about it is that my accent is basically vanished in the generated speech. So I didn't think before about it, but that's actually a pretty nice way to make your own speech in future videos, maybe like in one or two years completely accent free, which makes it easier for people to understand it. And in this video, I will show you how you can create your own voice clones uh, with your own voice or voice of others, as I said. And yeah, let's get started. Before we start creating our first audio samples using voice cloning, I would like to introduce you to some theoretical backgrounds and how those models work and how they generate speech. And if you're not really interested in that, just skip to the hands-on voice cloning part. The first thing I stumbled upon when trying to figure out how to clone a voice using AI was that there are two different terms. There's one, on one hand side are the single speaker data sets and on the other hand side the multi-speaker data sets. The single speaker just contains speech of a single speaker. So using those data sets only brings you a model that is able to synthesize speech of that particular speaker. While if you have multi-speaker data sets you can train models which are able to synthesize speech from the spe like the using the voice of different speakers and that's actually what we want to do because we want to create synthesized speech from voice which the model hasn't seen during training so it's a zero shot approach okay now that we have our multi speaker dataset how can we actually use it to train our model the model is usually separated into three different parts which are the speaker encoder, the synthesizer, and the vocoder. Let's start with the speaker encoder. So why do we need a speaker encoder? The idea behind the speaker encoder is we would represent our speech to a dimension where similar voices are close to each other and very separate or very different voices are very far away from each other in that particular space or representation space. So we take an audio sample and create a fixed dimensional vector, which actually in that dimension uh, represents the characteristics of that voice. That's why we encode the speech. And the big benefit of this approach is that our model later just gets the vector representation and has to learn to synthesize speech for that particular voice. Later, if we have trained our model, we can use whatever audio samples we have, create a vector representation for those and give them also to our model and then we can create speech with that new voices which otherwise would be possible because then our model would directly learn the voices of particular speakers which are in the data set by giving the model vector representations in a certain space it just learns to use those representations to synthesize specific speeches and this makes it possible in a zero-shot way to later use new voices create an encoding for those and yeah, synthesize speech for that. So what does a synthesizer do? Briefly said, the synthesizer just creates a null spectrogram out of a text transcript. So we give the model text and it outputs us a null spectrogram, which we can then use uh, with a vocoder. But first, let's talk about the null spectrogram and why we don't directly output like a waveform which we can actually use as an audio sample and instead I use the synthesizer to create a melt spectrogram. Now we can see an example of a melt spectrogram describing human voice. What you can actually see on the y-axis is that the scale is logarithmic and this is considering that the human hearing actually is also on a logarithmic scale so we can either distinguish frequencies in the lower dimension like lower frequencies but we have higher or like for us it's harder to difference or distinguish uh, pitches or uh, like waves and higher frequencies so that way 
the MELT spectrogram has way more quality and uh, information in the lower frequency area and has less information in the higher frequency area. And this way we, we have a representation that is actually closer to the human hearing. Also, if we now compare the MELT spectrogram to a waveform format, we can see that the MELT spectrogram needs way fewer parameters and is hence a way more efficient representation of speech than a waveform. And this is why models usually, or the synthesizer, predicts a MELT spectrogram and not a waveform format. Now that the synthesizer has predicted a MELT spectrogram, we need to transform it to a format that we actually can listen to. So basically that could be a waveform format. And how can we use that? That's why we have the vocoder or why we train a vocoder. And there are different ways. From my point of view, the most popular vocoder is still the WaveNet, which was published by DeepMind in 2016. And I think it's because of its very good speech quality and like the generated waveform audio quality. And there are definitely newer options which are more efficient and less time consuming, but still many models still use the WaveNet as a vocoder. And what the what well and what the vocoder actually does is pretty easy. It's just converting the mouse spectrogram into audio waveform format that we can then listen to. Okay, now let's summarize all the things that we've seen so far. Uh, first of all, our model needs two inputs. One, one input is like the audio samples that we, with a voice that we actually would like to clone and the text that we would like to generate speech for. Uh, then first, we create a speaker embedding using the speaker encoder. And the embedding basically contains characteristics of that particular voice that we would like to clone. And there is the synthesizer, which then takes the speaker embedding and the text that we would like to create speech for and creates a melt spectrogram. And in that melt spectrogram, we already have the representation of our final speech that we would like to uh, listen. And this is the job of the vocoder to then take the melt spectrogram and create a waveform format out of it so that we can then listen to that and have our yeah, text created to speech with a voice that we would like to clone. Okay, and now let's start creating our first own audio sample with a cloned voice. Okay, now let's start by creating our first own audio samples. For that, I used Audacity. It's a free tool, free open source uh, audio capturing tool. So feel free also to use it. This is how Audacity actually looks like. And here you can just select from what microphone I want to record. Uh, I used this external microphone so far. Uh, then you just press on this red circle, which means like recording. I guess you have seen that before. Uh, and now you just say something which is like a little bit diversity and variety of text. Not the same. Try to avoid any as or ams, <laughs> which I now have in my recording. And then you can stop it here. Now you have created your first audio track. Uh, the authors of Tortoise, or Tortoise, which is actually the model that we will use, uh, recommended to have like uh, three to five different uh, audio samples created. So, you know, definitely make sure that you will create more. And it's recommended to have like mm, audio samples in the length of five to 10 seconds. Once you have that, you know, just uh, add the uh, project ratio or rate actually <clears throat> to 22,000 uh, or 20, 22K. And then we will export it as a wave uh, file format. Um, yeah, also make sure that you select the 32 bit float, fl floating, <clears throat> floating point encoding and the WAF or <laughs> wave format. Uh, maybe call it sample audio one and then save it. You can just continue and now you have saved your first audio sample. Continue doing uh, or do this for like five different audio samples and then uh, we will upload them to Colab Notebook, uh, which will be the next step. Okay, and now we will create our first audio sample with our clone voice. For that, we will use the model called Tortoise, which I already pronounced before. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure if that's the correct way to pronounce it, but <laughs> you know, know what I mean with that. Uh, that's from the original author. 
and they provide a colab network uh, notebook which makes it super easy to use the model and create audio uh, speeches or samples and uh, that's what I already did I basically opened this link and copied uh, what, what the authors uh, yeah, provide there and this is how it looks like as you can see first we have to install certain packages which are needed uh, or required to actually use the model which we will do now uh, you can see <laughs> This means like uh, we are creating a connection uh, to a GPU uh, environment. Maybe if you're not 100% sure, check this one out. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, German right now, but you will see like a uh, hardware accelerator should be a GPU for you to make it faster because Tortoise, as the name suggests, is <laughs> quite a slow model. So the inference and uh, creation of speech takes a little bit. Now you can see that uh, the model is installing the required packages. The next step will be also to import then required modules. So this is more like on a Python level. Um, okay, this is done. Now next step. I think uh, this could also take a little longer to download several required models. I guess the weights of the model will be loaded in the background. Mm, maybe I just skip to the next section where we can first of all type in our text. This is what I did uh, in my uh, introduction basically that you saw. So maybe I just write right now, um, thanks for reading this article. I hope you learned something. So that's basically what I did uh, before. And here we can use or decide to use different presets. Mm, the fast one uh, provides you like a faster inference. So the generation of speech is faster, but if you can also go for high quality to make the result or the waveform audio uh, that will be generated as good as possible. Um, then we also have to execute this cell. And the next step, we can skip this one, also this one. Actually, we will uh, just jump to this one, next cell, which you can find here. Optionally, upload, uh, use your own voice by running the next two cells. And for that, we just um, uh, yeah, run this cell. Maybe you also rename this. I, I already did it with my name. And then you will be asked to upload your audio samples. Because the execution of this cell took a little bit longer, I would had to skip and wait until we are able to actually upload the files. And now you see, you know, this prompt, then just choose your files. And for me, those are the five um, audio samples I generated. Okay, this took also a little bit longer than expected. So I had to skip this uh, also to make the video shorter. And now the final step, we will take our custom voice with the voice samples which we uploaded uh, before, uh, the preset fast, which you definitely can also change, maybe try a little bit around, um, but we, yeah, as you can see, used fast for that. And then we can just, yeah, generate our speech with the, ah, I forgot the text, to mention the text, this is uh, what we earlier defined, like, thanks for reading this article, I hope you learned something. Also that text you can change to whatever you want to have, and yeah, now let's generate our speech. There's our finally generated speech. I will play now. Thanks for reading this article. I hope you learned something. And yeah, as you can hear, it maybe sounds a little bit different than the one I showed in the introduction of the video is because underlying the Tortoise model is using some diffusion uh, kind of model like we know from Dolly. And so there's some randomization in it and the results are basically most of the time not the same. So that, that would uh, explain why the, this sample sounds a little bit different than the one in the introduction, even though they're kind of similar. And if you want to learn more about how the Tortoise model actually works, feel free to write a comment so that I know that you're interested in that. Also, please let me know. It's my first video ever on YouTube. So if you have recommendations or anything else, 
please write it down. Give me a thumbs up. You know, I'm pretty new to that stuff, but uh, I would really appreciate uh, if you, yeah, provide any other feedback to me. Thank you. Yeah, so as I said in the end, that was my very first video on YouTube and I'm very grateful for any kind of feedback you can give me if uh, maybe you have some tips, improvements, things you couldn't understand or something else. Feel free to share with me. I would be very grateful for it. And yeah, see you in the next video.